What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're doing a sci-fi workstation, thought I should change it up and do something a little bit less wear and tear and a little bit lower on the poly side, and just to show how quickly you can throw some shapes together to create some quick concepts for your art or for your video games. So I'm not going to be adding as much narration as usual into this video, but I will be jumping in here and there just to kind of give some points about exactly what I'm doing and the reasons for it. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get into it. So we're going to start off with a cube and start blocking out the main shapes. I'm going to let this whole modeling part play out as I just play around with the shapes and start working on all the blocking out stages and then start adding a few polys to the model. I didn't exactly know how I wanted this to turn out and I was kind of figuring it out along the way. But uh, I was just trying a few things and experimenting with different shapes until I was happy with something. I do start with the right side and then eventually I mirror that over so it takes up the exact same space on my UV map and I don't have to do my work twice. So as you can see for the next little bit I'll be working on this right side of the console and then I'll slowly work my way over.
Alright, so that's basically everything for the model itself. I ended up adding a few more cubes in, like the centerpiece, and a few of the other little objects around, just to kind of add a little more detail to the object. I didn't want to make it too high in poly. I wanted this to be more like a game asset that somebody could use in a video game. So obviously the lesser poly is the better in most cases. So this is what the end result was. I didn't exactly know which direction this was going to go into when the textures came, but I kind of just winged it throughout this video. And yeah, let's just jump into Substance Painter next and start adding in those textures. So now that I'm in Substance Painter, I can load in my FBX model from Maya and then go down to the texture set settings and I can switch my output size to 4K and make sure to check that little box that says use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And everything else looks good so I can go bake selected textures. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted this model to have a little bit less wear and tear as these tech objects tend to be pretty clean and not have a lot of markings or scratches on them. So what I'm going to start with is a smart material, one of these steel dark age materials, and then go in, just take down all of the scratches and all of the rust so it's pretty bare and plain. And then I can go and just tweak a few of the color settings just to get that look and that color that I was going for. So I thought adding those shiny metals will definitely help that model look a little more sci-fi, a little tech and futuristic looking, so here I'm going to start off with that dark steel and go tweak some of those colors. And once I'm happy with that material, I can right click set it to a black mask and then I can start assigning it to all my meshes. So majority of this model is going to consist of two main colors, so just like we did with the first dark steel color, I'm going to do the exact same thing but make this one a little bit lighter. So I thought it would be cool to have a bunch of glowing lights in different colors in this model. So to make those glowing emissive lights work, I have to go change my shader. So when you start with Maya, it gives you the alpha rough shader setting, but you actually have to switch that over to an alpha blending. So if you go to the top right, the shader settings there, you can switch that shader over to the correct one. And then you can go ahead and change the emissive intensity um, in the slider. You can, unfortunately can't do this above one actually in the renderer, so you have to come out into the editor, into the shader settings, and actually drag that slider up. But once you do that, you can go add an emissive channel, um, which I do here, and then I can actually add some emissive light to those objects. So as you can see, the glowing light wasn't showing, and that's just because the emissive color that I added was set to black. So if I drag that up into the white, or to a certain color, in this case just over to a green, and then I go into the render, you can actually see it start glowing.
all of these monitor images, I just went on Google and found some free to use tech UI images. And then just save those as JPEGs and like the other videos, just drag those files, drop them into my scene and set them to, as textures into the current project. And then using the projection tool, I can just project this image right onto my mesh. Same thing with these larger monitors, I ended up just doing a UV snapshot of my UVs in Maya and then I can take those into Photoshop and then after I gather all my reference of my UIs and all the images that I want to use on my monitors and my screens, I can bring those into Photoshop and start placing them over my UV map. So basically I know exactly where that monitor is going to be and I can start fitting in everything to look like it actually belongs there. Now a lot of these screens probably won't make sense, they were just free images I found online but they were tech related and they looked pretty cool. So in Photoshop I can tweak around the colors just to make them match a little bit more since they're all from different sources um, just so it looks like they actually belong together. It's just a quick and easy way to start throwing your concepts together of how you actually want the screens to look. And as you can see here I just basically save this image as a JPEG and then just like the other ones just drag this into my current Substance Painter project and set that as a texture and I can project that image right onto my mesh and because I lined it up earlier in Photoshop over my UV map I know they're gonna fit properly right where my monitors are on my UV. So quickly jump into the renderer just to see how things are looking and things are looking good so I can go grab all those textures I created on my texture 1 and copy them over to my texture 2. So for the large monitor, I knew I wanted it to glow a little bit more, so I decided to play around with those emissive settings and made it a little bit transparent. But for the glowing effect, just because this was going to be still renders, to make my life a little bit easier, I just decided to do that in Photoshop. So at the very end, I just took my final renders, threw those in Photoshop, and added a blur effect. 
and then played around with those levels and the colors a little bit just to make the screen a little bit brighter and to make it look like it was glowing. But just wanted to let you guys know ahead of time because the final renders do look a little bit different than the images in Substance Painter and that's why I just took it into Photoshop afterwards and tweaked a few of those colors. add a few more glowing effects I can go add a few alphas that already come preset in substance painter and then starting off with a plastic material I can set that to a black mass switch that alpha channel and then just paint those right onto my mesh and then by turning up that emissive color to whichever color I would like that glowing effect will actually show on that mesh So the model was looking a little bit plain, I wanted to add a little bit of screws or bolts, so same thing with the other decals we created, I'm going to go find a nice alpha as just like a circle alpha that's already in substance and just change the height, I can add a height channel to that texture and then make that just so it's indented a little bit so when I go paste these bolts everywhere it looks like they're actually pressed into the metal.
quickly a few small changes to the color and the opacity of my large monitor. And that's basically everything for the textures. So I go in and start changing the environmental map a little bit. I ended up going with one of those studio lights just because it looked really good with the materials and the reflectivity of those metals. But I ended up just tweaking a few of these colors afterwards. And like I mentioned, I threw this whole render into Photoshop and actually added a little bit more glowing effect to that monitor. I did that with a Gaussian blur and just adding another layer, I could just add a different blending mode and make that glow a little bit more. But that's basically everything. I just wanted to show how quick and easy it can be throwing some shapes together to create some concepts for your art or for your video games. Um, the power of Substance and Maya, you can really just bring these models to life pretty quickly. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to make. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps me out. I can't believe how quick this channel is growing, so thank you to everyone who's supported this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.